As we have seen, there are different types of possible transfer functions to transform rainfalls into discharges, suitable for different types of catchment or areas. The rational method, adapted to smaller areas where no measurements are available, will be discussed in this lesson. Let's consider this idealized catchment, with the outlet here at point zero. By definition, the time of concentration Tc of this catchment is the time taken by the most hydraulically remote point in the catchment to reach the outlet. We can draw isochrones that are lines connecting the points in a watershed that have equal travel times to the outlet. The most remote isochrone represents the time of concentration Tc which is n times t0 in the present example. We define aj as the area between two successive isochrones, for example, j minus 1 times t0 and j t0. And the time t0 is a reference time depending on the size of the watershed. For example, it could be 10 minutes or 1 hour or even more. To clarify the construction of the method, we will use an example with five isochrones as illustrated here. This means that the time of concentration of this catchment is five times T0. We consider this short uniform rainfall of duration T0, that is the time of concentration of each subcatchment. Let's construct the related hydrograph issued from subcatchment A3. The hydrograph has a triangular shape, corresponding from time 2t0 to time 3t0 to an increase of the part of subcatchment A3 contributing to the outflow, and then from time 3t0 to time 4t0 to a decrease of the discharge corresponding to a progressive emptying of A3. So the first drop of water falling here on uh, isochrone 2t0 will arrive at the outlet at 2t0. And the last one falling here on time t0 on isochrone 3t0 will arrive at time 4t0. The volume of rain here is i times t0 per unit area and thus it will be I A3 T0 over this subcatchment. However, not all the rain will produce runoff. This is accounted for by the runoff coefficient C that indicates the fraction of the rainwater on the area that will flow as runoff. So its value is comprised between 0 and 1 and depends on the soil coverage. For our subcatchment A3, the co runoff coefficient is C3, so the total volume of rain available for runoff is C3 I A3 T0. The maximum discharge occurs at time 3 T0, when the whole subcatchment contributes to the outflow. So this maximum discharge is C3 I A3 in such a way that the volume of the triangle here is indeed C3 I A3 T0. In practice, for simplicity, the triangular hydrograph will be represented as a rectangle with the same area. The volume of water and the maximum discharge are the same as for the triangle. Only the internal time of concentration of A3 is neglected. So, applying the same principle for the other subcatchments, we can construct the resulting schematic hydrograph. The maximum discharge is of course different for each subcatchment, as the runoff coefficients and the subcatchment areas are different. If the rain lasts two times T0 with the same intensity, we can construct the resulting schematic hydrograph by adding the blue rectangles to the red ones with a delay of T0. We can continue like this for a rain duration of 5T0, that is the time of concentration of the old catchment. 
we see that the maximum discharge is obtained here when all the subcatchments contribute to the discharge at the outlet. This is expressed by this ex equation. But now, what happens if the rain lasts longer than 5t0, the time of concentration of the entire catchment? Well, in this case, as we have seen with the, with the intensity duration frequency curves, as the rain duration is more important, the rain intensity is lower. Constructing the resulting hydrograph as previously, we see that the maximum discharge is now spread over two time steps and it is lower than the value obtained previously. The direct comparison of the two situations confirms the reduction in the maximum discharge. So we can conclude that the maximum discharge is obtained when the rain duration TR is equal to the time of concentration TC. For shorter rain durations, not all the catchment will contribute, and for longer duration, the rain intensity decreases. This can be generalized to any number of subcatchments. In this example, with n subcatchments, and the total time of concentration equal to n times t0, the maximum discharge is still obtained when the rain duration tr is equal to tc. So if we want to apply the method to a practical case, the first step would be to divide the catchment in isochrones and find for each of them the runoff coefficient c. This is unfortunately an almost impossible task, as we should therefore be able to estimate the time traveled by each drop of water at any point in the catchment until the outlet. However, as the main interest of the method is to evaluate the maximum discharge, we can adapt it as follows. Instead of considering isochrones, we will divide the catchment in areas of equal runoff coefficient depending on the soil coverage. Knowing the layout of the catchment, this can be done easily. The maximum discharge is then evaluated by this formula, where C is an average runoff coefficient for the catchment, calculated as a weighted average as indicated here. In this formula, besides C, we have I, that is the rain intensity, its value can be found in IDF curves, for example, and A, that is the total area of the catchment. Here are some examples of runoff coefficients for different types of urban areas. We see that for relatively impervious areas, such as business districts or industrial areas, the runoff coefficient can be very high, here and here, close to 1. This means that almost no infiltration will occur, and there will thus be no delay in the runoff. On the opposite, green areas like parks or playgrounds have much smaller runoff coefficients. Such areas allow to delay the flow propagation after a rainfall event, and in this way reduce the discharge that will have to be collected in the drainage system. Here are other examples of values for the runoff coefficient. Again, we see that forests produce very little runoff as almost all the rainwater is kept in the area as infiltration or interception and evapotranspiration by the trees. Usually, for watersheds more elongated or wider than the average, the discharge estimated using the rational method will be corrected by a factor depending on the shape of the catchment as illustrated here. Let us illustrate all this by means of an example. You probably know the lake of Louvain-la-Neuve that is in the reality a storm pond. It was designed when the city was constructed in order to store the excess run of water. Indeed, this area was initially covered only by grass and crops. So the construction of the city has completely changed the soil coverage, making, making it much more impervious. 
As a consequence, an increased runoff was expected that would finally increase the discharge in the malaise, this small stream that um, that flows until the deal and could possibly induce floods in Otigny and uh, Wavre, the neighboring agglomerations. So the rational method was used to determine the inflows into the lake due to runoff and then consequently the size of the lake. So the first step was to estimate the equivalent runoff coefficient. Considering the areas designed to be covered by impervious material with a high runoff coefficient and the areas that would remain more pervious, a global value of 0.61 was found. Then, in order to select the appropriate rain intensity, we first need to know the time of concentration. Considering that each drop of water takes about 10 minutes to reach the near, nearest sewer after falling on a roof or on the ground, and that it travels then for a maximum distance of 3 km through the, through the sewer system, we obtain a time of concentration of 27 minutes. This estimation of the time of concentration is the one done at the moment of the design of the lake. However, the assumption regarding the flow velocity in the sewer is questionable. 3 meters per second is a very fast flow, and the result is a quite short time of concentration. If we consider a more classical value for the velocity, that is 1 meter per second, we obtain this new estimate for the time of concentration, that is now 60 minutes. This difference could affect the design of the sewer network, but it won't affect the, the, the size required for the storm pod, which is our point of interest here. Using the Talbot formula to calculate the rain intensity with the coefficients a and b given here, corresponding to a return period of 10 years, we obtain this expression here, leaving the rain duration t as a parameter. So with this, we can express the volume VE entering the lake as a function of the rain duration T. We need, of course, to make sure that all the units match and it was decided here to express the duration of the rain in minutes. The lake has also an outlet that can be seen here from these pictures taken when the lake was emptied for a maintenance. Considering that the outflow to the Malaise stream is restricted to one cubic meter per second, we obtain the following expression for the volume exiting the reservoir during a rainfall of duration T. We can now uh, write the balance of water entering and exiting the lake as a function of the rain duration T we see that we obtain the maximum volume for a duration of 110 minutes. And with this, we know the required storage in the lake. Of course, this is the volume that should, that should be available all the time. So if for a landscape interest, it is better to have a lake always filled with water, this additional volume should be available above the free surface level. The rational method is designed to determine the peak discharge of relatively small catchments or areas. In the case of larger areas, as illustrated here with five sub-catchments, the rational method would calculate the maximum discharge for the whole area, considering that the whole run of water from the different sub-catchments arrives at the same time at the outlet. But in the reality, there will be some delays. For example, the water collected from subcatchment 1 will flow until point X and then flow through the drainage system from X to Z at the outlet. On the opposite, the water collected from subcatchment 5 will directly arrive at point Z. Let us consider that each subcatchment has its own time of concentration until its outlet. For example, 
TC1 and TC2 are the times of concentration of subcatchment 1 and 2, respectively, until point X. TC3 and TC4 are the times of concentration of subcatchment 3 and 4, respectively, until point Y. And TC5 is the time of concentration of subcatchment 5 until point Z. So the total time of concentration of the old catchment will be denoted TC15. We have seen that if the rain duration exceeds the time of concentration, the idealized hydrograph presents a trapezoidal shape with a rising limb during the time of concentration TC, then a maximum value until the end of the rain TR, and a recession until the time base TR plus TC. For convenience of the graphical representation, this trap is may be replaced by a parallelogram, just by mirroring the recession line. Let's apply this to the illustrated catchment. We consider a rainfall with a duration equal to the global time of concentration, so TR equal TC15. The effect on subcatchment 5 is represented here with the transformation from the trapezoidal shape to a parallelogram. The local time of concentration is TC5, that is of course shorter than the global time of concentration. We can do the same for subcatchments 3 and 4, taking into account the delay TYZ, which is the travel time from Y the outlet of subcatchments 3 and 4, and uh, 2 point Z, the outlet of the old catchment. We continue by adding the contributions of subcatchments 1 and 2 with the appropriate delay TXY plus TYZ. Finally, the resulting hydrograph is simply the addition of the contribution of the five parallelograms. These lines represent some examples of these additions, where we see here, for example, for the orange line, that the, not all the catchments contribute completely. So we have here the final result. The interesting point is that the maximum discharge of the hydrograph is lower than the addition of the maximum discharges of the five parallelograms. So the method allows taking into consideration the lag between the different subcatchments. Indeed, in the present example, we see that subcatchment 5 is already emptying here, while subcatchment 1 is still in the rising phase. The simple addition of all the maxima would lead to an overdesign of the outlet pipe. This finishes our overview of rainfall runoff relations adapted either to large catchments or small areas. Thank you for your attention.